Hello and welcome to Vintage Sky. Today I'm going to tell you about a glider which was designed for everything. This is the SZD9 Bochan. Its name means stork. Stork is a very beautiful bird, very common in Poland. It is believed to bring good luck if stork makes a nest on your house. And storks fly away from Poland to warm countries for winter and therefore they, they are the masters of navigation as well as thermal soaring. Bochan was built in SZD works. This is Szybowcowy Zakład Doświadczalny. This means experimental glider works. And this was a great company which built about 50 different types of gliders in Poland. SZD9 Bochan glider was designed as all-in-one glider on which you could start with your initial basic training and go on to record flights high altitude flights and even aerobatics. It was designed in the beginning of 1950s. This was the time when uh, gliding schools finally resigned from the single seat method of training, about which I told you in the episode about Jabba glider, and the two seat glider was, uh, was required. Also, there was a category in gliding sport for two seat gliders, which was later withdrawn, and uh, there, therefore there was a need for a two seat uh, high performance modern glider. Bochan was designed by engineers team led by Marian Wasilewski, Roman Zatwarnicki and Justin Sandauer. They used some modern design features which were not so common at those times. Especially I mean the wing which was swept forward. This allowed for a great visibility from the back cockpit both to the sides as to front as the seat was higher than the front seat as well as it uh, made the second pilot, in this case mostly the instructor, uh, sit in the center of gravity. So the performance, the, the behavior of the glider did not change much after student was flying first solo flights. And this was a nice feature for a glider which was used for a uh, training. Bochan was one of the first gliders in the world which used uh, the design of forward swept wing. Also, the wings of Bochan were pretty high above the ground, so it was hard to hit the ground uh, while uh, learning takeoff or landing or even outlanding uh, in some uh, uneven uh, field. Test flights of Bochan were in the early years of 1950s. Tests were pretty much positive. One great change which was made was the angle of incidence, which was uh, modified so that the fuselage of the glider was more parallel to the ground, therefore creating less drag. And this increased the glide ratio of the prototype from 21 to 26. Also, the wheel was moved to the back because the glider was pretty heavy. Wheel which was behind the center of gravity made it easier to transport it on the ground. It had special carry bars uh, on the on the tailplane, uh, so it was easier to lift the glider and transport it on the ground. And as it was a training glider, then bringing it back from the place where it landed was pretty much uh, frequent. Also, adjustable rudder pedals were introduced. Here you can see them. There is a red pin on the side of each pedal. You pull it out, then you adjust the pedal to your preference and you block it. So therefore you can uh, make the glider more comfortable. Uh, obviously this feature was available only on the ground. When it comes to test flying the glider, there was an interesting episode uh, while testing the tailspin behavior of Bochan. There were tests which included um, performing a flat spin, which is a pretty much dangerous uh, maneuver. The glider doesn't have uh, uh, any specific uh, control surface which would effectively make it recover from flat spin. And flat spin occurs especially when the center of gravity is moved dangerously far aft towards the back of the glider. So to achieve this, there was a sandbag strapped onto the back of the fuselage and there was a line, a rope, which went from the bag to the cockpit so that the pilot could enter the flat spin, then pull the rope, make the sand fly away and then the glider regained its, uh, its proper center of gravity uh, position. Uh, obviously, as strange as it may sound, it worked. So after entering the flat spin, the rope uh, tangled somewhere and the pilot was unable to 
release the ballast from the back and therefore the glider was in a constant flat spin. Pilot somehow managed to recover. Uh, it, it is said that it was literally a few meters above the ground, I don't know, uh, but uh, it was so emotional a moment that the pilot uh, doesn't remember how did he recover. And this is pretty, this is pretty bad because if he remembered we would have the answer how to save ourselves from a pretty, uh, well, very dangerous situation. And it would be interesting to know how he did it. Anyway, after all those tests, the glider was named SZD9 Bis Bochan and brought into production. The first version was called Bochan 1A. There were 10 of them made. Then we had a version 1B with larger horizontal stabilizer and 11 made. Then the, the wings were made less swept forward and there was a different elevator with trimmer. This version was called 1C and was produced in 40 craft. Then there was a version 1D, basically it accommodated a larger wheel and there was a mass production of 186 gliders. And finally in 1967 there was the Bochan 1E. This is the version which is still in use and this was a glider modified to suit mainly the training purpose, not the record flights in a two-seat version. It was, well, less curvaceous as we may look at it. The tailplane and the edges of the wings were more, more rectangular, they had straight uh, edges. As we see here, this is the earlier version of the tailplane and this is the Bochan 1E. So a difference in shape, the wingspan was a little shorter, but the process of production was made much easier. Also this glider accommodated shock absorbed uh, wheel and also the instrument panel was placed on uh, well rubber bushings so that it would shake less. As we talk of training, this was the glider which had short flights, but many takeoffs and landings of various uh, quality, uh, one after another uh, during the uh, training uh, session. All those changes made the weight of the glider increase. Here you can see the weight of uh, particular versions of uh, Bochan glider. Uh, eventually it weighed more than the ultralight airplane. But it was also very durable. There was uh, an episode of, uh, of test flight of, of the version 1E, which uh, had to prove that the glider with extended dive brakes does not go over its never excess speed, which was 200 km per hour. And the glider during this test achieved the speed of 300 km per hour and then safely recovered and landed. And what turned out is that the test was mistakenly performed with the dive brakes closed instead of open. Pretty much a failure, but this glider sustained it with no problem. It was very durable, very robust, heavy glider, very stable therefore, but it was hard to stop it on the ground because it had drum brake on the wheel, which was taken from a motorbike, which was limited to 45 kilometers per hour and weighed, I don't know, 60 or 80 kilograms. So it was uh, not the best brake for the glider, but this was the way the industry, the industry worked uh, those days. The Bochan 1E was advertised during the World Gliding Championship in the city of Leszno in 1968. There are many potential customers were uh, taken as passengers. Pilots showed the performance of the glider, which was pretty high because the glider was uh, certified for uh, aerobatics. And it made pretty good impression. It turned out to be an export uh, hit of Polish glider works. Out of uh, 670 Bochan gliders made, half Half of them were exported and here next to me you can now see the list of 27 countries which bought uh, the Bochan glider. So it was pretty, pretty much of a success. Also here you can see the performance data of Bochan glider, but obviously this is a data of the new glider. Uh, what am I doing here is presenting history, not uh, teaching how to fly. So if anyone is about to fly Bochan glider, then uh, refer to pilot's manual, to operating manual and see what restrictions are now on the specific uh, glider you are about to fly. As a new glider, Bochan was certified for 
cloud soaring, uh, flying next to clouds which are stormy clouds uh, creates some uh, danger of lightning strike. So therefore uh, this glider had uh, like earthing brushes on the edges of the wings which made electrical potentials between the glider and the surrounding atmosphere more even. This is how I could describe it. So this is uh, one certification to fly in clouds. It was also certified for flying at night. It could be equipped with lights on the tailplane and on the wing edges. There was only one flaw that if the night flight was about to be a training flight then Bochan had to be equipped with a second instrument panel for the back cockpit which was not standard and was not so easy to fit it uh, to fit it there. Uh, Bochan was also certified for aerobatics. It had durability of up to plus 6 and minus 3 G with pretty much safety limit until the destroying acceleration was met so uh, pretty safe uh, feature again and it had very large cockpit so if you were about to perform a high altitude flight which was done there was no problem to have uh, massive clothing for pilots and to accommodate uh, radio equipment and uh, oxygen installation those high sideboards of the of the cockpit have one interesting feature 500 first bochan gliders have solid boards uh, while further craft have steps which make it easier to get inside uh, the bochan glider here you can see the layout of the cockpit uh, with standard instrumentation all the flight controls uh, are also available for the instructor in the second uh, cockpit inside the wings there are two massive storage compartments which are accessible in flight uh, from the second cockpit so it's a nice place it's easy to accommodate a canopy cover or, or parachute uh, covers inside or, or anything else there are no push rods no flight controls to be interrupted by these um, uh, elements which are stored in these compartments here you can see the bochan glider with no uh, wings and you can see the you can see clearly right through the fuselage here where those uh, storage uh, spaces also here you can see the tailplane with horizontal stabilizer taken away it's important when you carry the horizontal stabilizer to uh, keep the uh, control surfaces even with the rest of the stabilizer so that you don't damage the uh, trimmer uh, bowden cable uh, it sometimes sometimes happens it is also worth uh, noticing that uh, the canopy of Bochan glider changed during uh, production. First it had a separate uh, small windscreen and then the opening part and the part sliding to the back for the second cockpit. Eventually it had a one single part canopy opening to the side for the front cockpit and canopy sliding to the back for the, uh, for the second one. But the front canopy could be opened, closed and jettisoned in an emergency from the front as from the second cockpit so interesting feature i'd like also to have a quick look at the seat belts of the glider there were uh, th this was the same principle and is the jastromp uh, but these were uh, properly designed so that they would not unbuckle on their own it's also uh, it, it was only important uh, not to pull too hard on this red square element because you could break this uh, metal bar which blocked the uh, seat belts the, the harness up until 1970, Bochan gliders set 29 world records in different categories. This is in itself a record because no other single type of a glider achieved so much. One most noticeable flight is the, the altitude record by Stanisław Józefczak. The flight took place on November the 5th. Uh, 1966 with the altitude of uh, 12,560 meters with altitude gain of 11,680 meters so a great achievement honestly the very successful Bochan glider had many modifications there were versions uh, with engine there were versions uh, designed to be a flying laboratories there were versions which were for high performance flights but i'm going to tell you once about all those modifications of bochan glider and as for now i can leave you only with one question why didn't anyone make a bochan out of carbon or other laminate
See you next week in another episode of Vintage Sky. I'm Marek, thanks for watching.